Okay, so Dark Knight of the Soul and things getting worse when you're doing the letting go process. Um, the uh, that's uh, yeah. So the the stuff which I don't always share is that that can happen. Sometimes things can seem to get worse and you can be like battered left, right, and centre. Yes. And you seem to be a good spiritual student doing your work and uh, ticking all the spiritual boxes and yet you're not getting relief quickly and it seems to be you're, you're beaten on the head non-stop. And then um, that, that can also happen. Uh, as you start, also if you do spiritual work, especially if you're doing A Course in Miracles or doing advanced spiritual work, there is a, it's like the soul, shall we say the soul, I mean, it doesn't exist in the non-dual world, has asked for freedom, probably asked for freedom ASAP. So that means that you are bringing on clearing very, at a very rapid rate. I think Hawkins, with his muscle testing, did some really interesting research around this. So, for a student of enlightenment, they may be clearing 15 lifetimes of karma in one lifetime you know, to pursue that level of freedom. Whereas other people who just want an easy life, you know, like this lifetime, I just want it easy. You know, they seem to have like not much stuff happening mm. for their whole life. <laughs> You're going, it's so boring working in the post office every day. I can't wait to get retired. And it's like, you see them five years later and nothing much has happened, you see. So, um, and then you, you're like being like hit on the head with catastrophe after catastrophe <laughs> after catastrophe after catastrophe and you're doing all this spiritual work and you're going, well, why is this happening to me? That can some, some you know, it's not always like that. This is the worst case scenario, but for sometimes it can happen. As a, but also as you clear, you become eligible to clear more. You know, so in the beginning you can, you can be clearing a lot of stuff and your level of consciousness goes. So you're now able to handle deeper karma, shall we say, deeper stuff which you wouldn't be able to handle. So it's almost like stuff has been given to you in divine order for clearing. So it's like, okay, I can just handle my pet pigeon being killed at the moment. You know, so it's like, okay, this is all he can handle, my pet pigeon. And then it's like, okay, I've now processed my feelings and gone to the non-dual realm around my pet pigeon. I've felt all the feelings, I'm feeling good now. Pet pigeon is no longer an issue. Then suddenly, like, everyone in your family gets killed on, a, on an airplane trip. They're going, but I, I cleared my pet pigeon. Why is this happening to me? It's like, but you're now, you've now cleared a lot of stuff, and you're now eligible for very fast clearing of stuff. So the universe thinks, okay, you can handle this. So you've got the tools to handle the basics. You, my experience is you clear something, and you have a period of... In general, you have a period of like you're in infinite bliss, you're like one with the world, everything's unfolding miraculously, <laughs> and you think you're done. Mm -hmm. You know, you think you're done. That's like I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like, you know, all the buses arriving on time, everything's synchronizing, mm -hmm. just the infinite now unfolding. You're witnessing the beauty of everything unfolding, of all of creation. And then suddenly it's like bang, you know, <laughs> and then bang, 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 you know, and it's like God, you know, it's like, you know, so, so that's like, but I love Hawkins because he was just so hilarious. It's like, he goes, he goes like, okay, so it's like, you're married, and I remember he said that you're married, and then your wife leaves with somebody else, and they take the Mercedes, and he goes, well, that pays that one off, you know, <laughs> I just paid that karma off, and just mm -hmm. laugh and let it go, you know, just, there's another weight that's been, been released, so that meant Okay, so if there's a lot of heavy processing, it's still, it's still, that's okay. It's still like I'm making progress. And also you don't know, you, you don't know, you might have wanted deep in your soul to be free. You know, so you're clearing stuff at a rate. But I always think it's like whatever I'm given, you know, with, the, with what I've got and with my intention, it, you know, you, you're able to handle it. You're able to handle it. And if you're given a lot, it's like there's, there's the great potential, especially if you're in the Course in Miracles or, or Night and Teachers or whatever, or Masters, then you have, you have what you need. You have what you need to transcend that, to let that go, to let that separated thing go. And I just think either one, one of the two, like I'm paying off that karma 
or you know this is like you know the universe thinks I can just handle I can probe but it, it's finite it's not like I'm going to be beaten on the head over and over again it's like okay you know like four lifetimes ago I was Genghis Khan no, you're not Genghis Khan, you're Adolf Hitler. I don't know. <laughs> These are not good. So there can be some heavy stuff. There can be some, you know, I was, um, I was the butcher of Venice. Who knows? These are, these are whatever it is. If you go around chopping everyone's head off, if you don't like them. Oh, that's some of the, some of the, some of the kings did that, didn't they? Okay, off with his head. You know, you, you, didn't, you didn't laugh at my joke, off with his head. So it's, it's like... So if I did that for a whole lifetime, you know, when people are sort of like, it's like I'm trying to be nice and everyone's like hitting me on the head every time I go, you know, it's like, this is a, isn't fair. Mm -hmm. But then I'm clearing. I had that, you know, my, my physical illness, I was having so many physical illnesses, it's not that bad anymore. So it was like a period of like, okay, you've now got kidney failure, you've now got gout, you now can't breathe, you've got asthma. It was like left, right and centre. I didn't know how many more illnesses it could get. So and there was like there was years of processing, a few years of processing. So it was like non-stop, tough. It was tough, but suddenly these things, you know, you're discharged from the rheumatology clinic. You haven't got gout anymore. Then you're discharged from the asthma clinic. You haven't got asthma anymore. Then you've got a transplant, and you haven't got a dialysis machine anymore. So all these things were happening. So it can seem for a while that is heavy going, but then my experience is like the heavy going. You know, it does clear. But then you can give a different type of heavy going later on, but not usually in the same place. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it's finite. And just, you know, just pay, make a joke, you paid that one off. Or if it's tough, you're clearing off a backlog. I always looked at it, for me as an addict, I always thought it was fun. You know, if I'm sitting and feeling my feelings, I'm sort of, it, you shouldn't really do this in the non jura but you, I'm just clearing up a finite backlog. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's not like, okay, God says you're bad and you, this is your suffering for all eternities. No, it's like, you know, this is like a level of stuff that needs to be cleared out. And I sort of see it like, okay, I've got 300 units. This is like, I'm doing 50 units or I might be doing 100 units, hopefully. <laughs> so, um, uh, so, like, if it's like a relationship thing or something, it's like, okay, I'm years and years of being in dependency around people, you know, wanting them to be the thing that will rescue me. I might have done that for 10 lifetimes. And I go, like, you're the one that's supposed to rescue me from this miserable life. And I keep doing that lifetime after lifetime. And it's like now, someone's gone and I'm feeling so awful. So great, you know, that might, if I think it's unfair, like, you know, then maybe, I don't know, like, you know, if, I, if it was like several lifetimes, maybe it's not unfair. Or maybe, you know, like someone, someone um, I love someone and they cheated on me. That's unfair. I never cheated on anyone in this lifetime, you know, but, you know, but who knows what I did in, a lot, a lot in the last lifetime. Also realise as well, another contextual reframe is that in other lifetimes, levels of consciousness in this planet were quite barbaric. You know, we're, we're, in, we're in a very civilised country. Very civilised at the moment, you know, compared to what it was like, I don't know, caveman times or pre-times or other times, you know, like in the Dark Ages. You know, like if I was living in the Dark Ages 15 lifetimes ago, there was no morals. You know, like, you've got a bag of donuts at home, I'll just club you on the head. <laughs> These donuts are now, are now mine. You know, murder is okay. You know, so it's like... So you don't know. So, so that's also... So sometimes when I'm going through some darker stuff for a longer period of time, all of these things help me to just go to the field of feelings. I never, I never perceive things are unfair. I can think like I wish it was going to end, end soon, you know, but it's going to end when it... But I'm also feeling like I'm doing my spiritual work for however long it is. And it's not like it's an unjust universe where I'm going to have unending stuff the, that's unfair. But also, as you transcend, you know, you, I am bringing light into the world, so I'm doing my bit, you know, by carrying my stuff, my darkness is being transmuted into being a channel for light. So it has, you can sort of recontextualize what are you going through, the dark night of the soul. 
So the dark night of the soul, I mean, dark night of the soul can mean different things. But the dark night of the soul means, uh, can often mean like you've been in the light and now you're in the darkness and you feel like divinity has abandoned you. Oh, I was in bliss for three days. And then, and then my pet dog got run, Rover got run over. So it's like, okay, and the bliss stops. So, but you know, if that for me can be felt out and transcended, mm -hmm. the only problem why it becomes a dark night of the soul is you think you can never get back to the infinite realm, you can never get back to the light. Or if something that you've projected is special out there is gone, you think it's not worth it. So you're going to suffer in the dark night forever. But then when you see that this stuff is finite, so the dark night will come to an end. So if I was in a dark, so that in itself stops the dark night of the soul. Because, you know, like a lot of the saints would go like, they're in infinite bliss and oneness. And then they go into, like, they lose it. And then they think, like, God has abandoned me, or I've lost that bliss forever, or I've done something wrong. Or I must have done something really bad. You know, and it won't come back. But for me, if the dark night of the soul came, then I'd be f doing the field feelings, doing the letting go process, or cancelling, or observing, and just go, go through that. So until until it passes. Uh, so those are the things. Those are the contextualizations when you're going through a rough patch. Or uh, okay, like you know, I mean, actually, it's quite funny. I mean, I shared like uh, I didn't really have much experience. I mean, you can intuit karmic stuff. Like I've shared in this group. Like for you know, I would buy expensive scarves and hats, and every time I go to a spiritual group. I never did past life research, so I don't know, but, uh, you know, like, hats and scarves would go missing. And, uh, and so I enter, it could be wrong, you know, I could be wrong, I haven't done past life regression, or I met someone who could do past lives. I thought, you're probably like a temple thief or something, you know, mm -hmm. so, probably like, uh, pulled out, whatever. But anyway, so, you can enter it, like, if every relationship I go to, the person's unfaithful after, after three months. You know, does it need rocket science to figure out? <laughs> yeah, I love you, I want to bury you. And then they're unfaithful. And okay, well, I've got a new girl. Okay, I love you, I want to marry you. And then they're unfaithful after three months. I mean, does it take rocket science to figure out what's going on? Uh, so, so that's the thing. Um, yeah, so 